Kia ora, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and this is episode 10 of AI, and this episode I've added ammo pickups and health pickups. Uh, you can see the character is currently damaged by the red vignette at the edge of the screen, and when I collect a health pickup, it's, uh, it's revived. Uh, also, I've added a clip count to the weapons, so you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, uh, beneath the ammo count shows how many clips I have left, and when there are no more clips left, then uh, I'm, I need to go and find some ammo, and I can no longer shoot. So when I collect an ammo pickup, the clips are correctly replenished and I can continue to shoot. The final thing is the AI is also aware of these ammo and health pickups. So if I damage the AI, it will go and try to find some health when its health gets too low. And also when it runs out of ammo, it should go and try and find an ammo pickup and then continue to attack me if it, <laughs> if it actually can find me. Sweet, let's get into it. Thank you to all the Patreon supporters this month. If you are interested in supporting this channel or the project files associated with these videos, then please head over to Patreon and check it out. Cheers. Okay, so the first thing to do is just create health and ammo pickups. Um, so I haven't actually covered how I made this effect in Shader Graph, so I figure now is a good time to cover that. So just start by creating a new shader under Universal Render Pipeline, Unlit Shader Graph, and I'm gonna call this Pickup Shader and create a new material for that shader called pickup material. Now just assign the shader to the material. I'm gonna create a new 3D object sphere and let me just move this across a little bit and just assign the material to the sphere. Now opening up the shader and shader graph, uh, first thing to do is actually um, we want the center of this to be transparent so we need to make the shader a transparent shader so if you select the graph inspector from up here and just go down to the surface type and select transparent this enables the alpha channel and the master node next thing to do is create a color for the pickup and a new float which i'm going to call um fresnel i think it's pronounced fresnel it could be fresnel but <laughs> um i think fresnel sounds better so for the color i'm going to set it to hdr mode um, and yeah, so now the first thing to do, this is literally the simplest shader in the world that you can ever write. You take the Fresnel effect, which what this does is just returns a value of zero when the normal and the view direction are aligned and returns a value of one when they are perpendicular. And you can control um, that amount uh, using this, this power amount. So to control that from the material, I'm just gonna plug in this uh, Fresnel property to the power slot here and just plug the output into the alpha channel. Now for the color, uh, just plug that into the base color and that is literally it. So save that asset, go back to the shader and now select the material. Now I can assign it a color and if I bump up the Fresnel amount, you can now see it blends out the center of the object and it doesn't matter which way I'm looking. Um, well, I always get this, uh, this sort of like cool sort of band on the outside and you could leave it like this color. I prefer to kind of bump the intensity up and just give it this sort of this glow factor here. So I might just bump the Fresnel up a little bit more like that. Cool, so yeah, that's, that's literally it. It's the simplest shader in the world. So next thing to do is just assign like an icon to this, uh, this sphere and to the center. So I've created one earlier in Blender, which is just this uh, super simple health icon here. So if I scale that down, and maybe just uh, scale it inwards a little bit, just so it doesn't look so chody, I guess. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, next thing to do, I guess I'll just call this like health pickup. Assign it a pickup layer. And yes, change children. Uh, for the sphere collider, I'll make it a trigger because we'll hook into the on trigger enter function in a minute. And we're gonna run into some issues a little bit where the AI can't distinguish between a weapon pickup and a health pickup. So I'm gonna use tags for this. So I'm just gonna create a few new tags, one called health, one called ammo, and another one called weapon. And then for the health pickup, I'm just gonna assign it the health tag. Uh, for the weapon pickup, I've actually got prefabs for these. So just gonna select all of them and assign it the weapon tag and yeah we'll do the ammo in a minute cool so that's pretty much it i think for the health pickup oh sorry one more thing um let me just disable the ai so it doesn't harass me um yeah so this this bounce animation script that i created earlier um yeah i'm just going to add that to this pickup and basically what this does before i show you the script is it um it's got these properties here bounce speed which just controls like 
how fast it's bouncing. Uh, it's got the bounce amplitude, which is basically how high it's bouncing and the rotation speed, which is like how fast it, it spins basically. So let me just quickly show you what that script looks like because I don't think I've covered this either. Um, yeah, it's got these three properties that I mentioned earlier and two private properties, the starting height and the time offset. So the starting height just records the location of the pickup in the scene and it just calculates like a random time offset in the value of like zero to two pi. So we just take the starting height and add on the sign amount, just taking the time multiplying by the bounce speed and add in on that random uh, offset. This just means all the pickups kind of, they don't oscillate together in the scene, they're sort of out of sync with each other. And the bounce amplitude, yeah, just multiply that sign value there. And then finally, just take the local position, assign the Y position and assign it back to the pickup. Then for the spin, basically just taking, doing the same thing, uh, just taking the Euler angles, uh, taking the rotation around the Y axis and incrementing it by the rotation speed and then assigning that back to the local rotation. Sweet, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now it's time to create the health pickup. Um, so I'm gonna create a new script called health pickup. Dun, 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 dun. Why did Unity not open that for me? Sweet, so just replacing all of that with a uh, on trigger enter. And yeah, the health pickup is basically gonna need to know how much to heal the character by. So I'm gonna create a new property called uh, amount. And first we just start by getting the health component, calling like other.get component. Getting the health component like that. If there is a health component, then I'm gonna create a new function called heal, which doesn't exist yet. But if I just type it out and then press alt enter, and generate method that will automatically implement the method in the class for me, which we'll get back to in a minute. Um, finally, just uh, we want to destroy the pickup once we've once we've actually healed the character. Cool. So back in the health script, I'm just going to move this down to the above the take damage function here, and uh, yeah, replace this implementation. So it's pretty much the same implementation as take damage, except um, rather than decrementing the health, we want to increment the health and also just um, set the um, the current health equals to mathf dot minimum of the current health and the max health. This just ensures it sort of doesn't go out of, uh, doesn't get above the max health amount. Yeah, next we update the, uh, the health bar and we don't need to check if we're dying. And instead of calling on damage, I'm just gonna create a new function called uh, on heal. And this will be overridden by the player, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, so yeah, cool, like on heal here, just passing in the amount. Cool, so yeah, open up the player health script and for on damage, um, yeah, just pretty much need to update the vignette in the exact same way. So I'm just going to move this to another function, whoops, um, called update vignette. And for the on heal implementation, all we do is just call <laughs> update vignette. I always type that extra R, I have no idea why. Um, update vignette, sweet. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the player. and. Um, I think that is pretty much it for the health pickup. So if I just re-enable the AI, um, there's kind of no indication of the player's health other than this sort of red uh, vignette at the edge of the screen. So yeah, you could see that there, it, uh, the vignette basically disappeared, which means it's working. Cool. Okay, so the next thing to do is just get the agent to find health when it uh, gets low on health. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is create a new state and the agent will enter that state when it gets low on health. So inside the uh, agent folder, I'll just create a new C sharp script called AI find health state. And this, this state is basically gonna be identical to the find weapon state. So I'm just gonna copy all of that code for now. Um, and just move it into the find health state. So I just need to rename this class to find health. Uh, just create a new enum for the state here called find health and just turn that like that. 
there's a couple of modifications that we need to make. Um, one is rather than just checking if the agent has collected a weapon, we want to check if the agent is no longer low on health, then move back to the find target state. So inside the uh, health script, I'm going to create a new property uh, called low health, and I'll just default that to 20 and create a new function called, uh, which returns a bool is low health. And this just returns the current health is less than that low health amount. And now inside the find health state, uh, we can just check if the agent is, um, is low on health. But first I forgot to do a couple of things. Inside the AI agent script, I just need to register that new state. Uh, so this is gonna be find health. And also just get the health component, um, just store it inside the agent. Cause yeah, I haven't done that yet. Um, find health. So just copy this down. Ching, 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 ching. Sweet. So now inside the find health state, um, yeah, just we can now just check here if the agent is low on health, or sorry, if it's not low on health, then it moves back into the find target state. Sweet. Um, <clears throat> one more thing is this sensor filter function. Currently, it's only taking in a pickup, so I also want it to incorporate those tag names that we set up earlier. So I'm going to add a, an additional parameter here called tag name and I'll just default it to null. And inside this loop, just check if, um, oh, sorry, what is it? If tag name is not equal to null and uh, the tag name of the object does not match, then we basically just want to uh, skip over this object. So I'm just going to use continue there. Sweet. Um, so now inside the find health state, we just need to pass in the health tag that we set up earlier. And for the find weapon state, we need to just update this one as well. Uh, so it only looks for pickups with the, the weapon tag on it. Cool. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it for the, for the find health state. The last thing to do is just um, update the attack target state so it moves into this state when it uh, gets low on health. So opening up the attack target state and yeah, I'm going to create a new function down here called update low health AI agent agent and here I'm just going to check if the agent health dot is low health then agent.stateMachine.changeState find health. And I just need to call this from inside the update function here. <clears throat> so one thing I just want to mention is it does mean that the agent is only going to go into this uh, find health state if it is attacking a target. And one thing I want to cover in hopefully the next episode is uh, utility AI uh, where it can the AI is constantly assessing multiple options and will uh, move into different states depending on what it, what's going on around it. Um, that'll be in the next episode though. So the final thing to do I think really is just to test all of this out. So if we go back into ah uh, what the hell AI find health state is not ah uh, sorry did I completely screw that up yeah I did find health sweet. Okay, don't know why my console window is so big. Go away. All right, cool. So now if I damage the agent, it's not trying to find health. Why not? It was supposed to, let me try that again. Maybe I just didn't kill it enough. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Man, that IK looks so bad. Need to fix that up, but uh, yeah. Sweet, so that's it for the AI uh, finding health. The next step is gonna be adding uh, ammo pickups. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, health pickup here and rename this to ammo pickup. And I'm just gonna create like a new material, duplicate this one and just call it like underscore green for ammo. Assign that to the pickup. Uh, just need to swap out the mesh here uh, for one I created earlier which is this awesome <laughs> looking blender model. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Something like that, I think. Maybe a little bit more. Cool. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna change the color to green. And green seems to be a bit more washed out than red, so I'll just 
increase the Fresnel a little bit. Cool, that looks all right. Um, so for the ammo pickup, just need to assign it the ammo tag and get rid of the health pickup script and uh, create a new ammo pickup script. So just um, quickly before I do this, I just kind of want to mention that the player <laughs> basically can't run out of ammo right now. Uh, so when its ammo drops to zero, it just automatically refills and there's no limit to the amount of times it can, uh, it can reload. So what we need to do is add a clip count to the Raycast weapon script, which um, the AI also uses. So uh, scrolling all the way up to the top, uh, I'm going to create a new property here called clip count and I'll just default this to two. I'm just going to give these default values as well. And yeah, what this is basically doing is just saying how many times you can reload. Um, so I'm going to create some helper functions here. Uh, one called should reload. And this is just going to check if we have, um, if we, oops, if we're out of ammo and we have at least one clip, then we should reload. This this is just going to prevent the AI and the player trying to reload when uh, when we have no clips. So the next function is going to be is low ammo. And here, this is just going to return the ammo count is equal to zero, and the clip count is equal to zero. The final function I think is going to be called um, I guess reload or Maybe I'll call it like refill ammo. And here, all we need to do is just set the ammo count equals to the clip size, and then just decrement the clip count. And <clears throat> yeah, that, that should be it. So now I just need to update the reload weapon script for the player, um, because currently it's just checking if the ammo count is less than zero. So here, uh, I'm just gonna Call this function should reload instead and that will just mean it will only try to reload if we have at least one clip left uh, when we refill the magazine rather than um, just assigning the ammo count to the clip size here uh, you can just call that refill ammo function sweet um, so yeah that's pretty much it for the player for the AI weapons, it's a very similar thing because the scripts are pretty similar right now. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's literally a copy and paste at the moment. Um, where is it? Refill magazine, detach magazine, attach weapon, drop magazine, refill, attach magazine, this one here. Yeah, weapon dot refill ammo. And there is somewhere, where is it checking if we should reload? I think um, that is being checked. Where is that being checked? That is inside the attack target state for the agent. So yeah, inside the attack target state, reload weapon. Here it's just checking if we have a weapon and the ammo count is less than zero. So yeah, here we just need to change this to uh, should reload. Sweet. Okay, so the next step is um, just actually adding the clip count to the UI for the player. So just um, opening up the canvas, um, this ammo widget has got text, which I'll rename to ammo text, and just duplicate this one for the clip text. I'll just move this, um, this one up slightly clip text down slightly and just decrease the font size a little bit something like that yeah that looks okay <clears throat> and then on inside the ammo widget um, just need to duplicate these properties here this one's going to be called clip text and yeah when we call refresh just need to pass in the clip count and yeah just uh, assign the clip text from the clip count like that now back in the inspector Ooh, okay, yeah, actually now there's a bunch of functions inside the code that basically need to be updated. Uh, every time we're updating the ammo widget, we just need to pass in the weapon clip count here. So I think there's two other places I need to fix this up. Inside the active weapon script for the player and inside the reload weapon script also for the player. <laughs> okay, cool. 
So now I should be able to assign that clip text to the ammo widget. If I just get rid of this console window like that. And I think that is pretty much it. So if I go back down to the ammo pick up and hit play. Yeah, so we can now see if I pick up a weapon, we can see um, it's got, oh, I didn't actually implement the ammo pickup function yet. So yeah, inside the ammo pickup function, this is gonna be super simple. We just hook into on trigger enter and we need to give it a an amount, like a clip, uh, clip amount to refill by, which I'll just default to like two for now. And we need to handle two paths, one for the player weapon equals to other dot get component active weapon and then if the player weapon so if we have a if the object that collected the pickup had this active weapon script which belongs to the player then I'm going to create a new function here called re oh, I guess it needs to be public refill ammo passing in the clip count <laughs> and here we just need to get the active weapon and then just call weapon dot uh, refill ammo passing in no sorry what do we want to do here yeah here we just want to get the clip count and increment by this clip count here and <clears throat> next we need to update the ammo widget just call in refresh weapon dot uh, ammo count weapon dot clip count sweet okay so now I need to just call this function inside here weapon dot refill ammo uh, passing in the clip amount like that okay cool so yeah now it's time to test all of this out for the player so if I just hit play So yeah, if I shoot, you can now see that the clips decrement when I run out of ammo and I should not be able to shoot anymore. Yeah, cool. But now if I go and collect some ammo, I've now got two clips, the player refills and I can carry on shooting. Cool, so yeah, that looks pretty good for the player. Now it's just time to implement it for the AI. And for the final stage, uh, we're just going to get the agent to pick up ammo when it gets low on ammo. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is just uh, yeah, modify this ammo pickup script to include the AI weapons. Uh, so it's pretty much copy and paste here. Uh, this is going to be called AI weapons. AI weapons. Uh, just copy this, copy this, copy this, copy this, copy this. Sweet, and uh, yeah, I need to create this function called refill ammo, which is literally going to be identical to this because these scripts are so similar. Um, but instead of get active weapon, I think it's just called uh, current weapon. And here we just set the increment the clip count. And there's no ammo widget to refresh for the agent, so I can delete that. Sweet. Um, so yeah, now when an agent walks over an ammo pickup, it'll refill its ammo. It's a little bit hard to tell because there's no sort of like visual indicator of an agent's uh, ammo, but um, it, I've tested this and it does work. So yeah, just trust me on that one. Thanks. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I need to create a new script called uh, AI find ammo state. And the state is again, going to be pretty similar to the find health state, except um, a few changes so uh, if I just open the find health state just copy and paste all of this to the find ammo state and here I'm just going to rename this to find ammo state and just return an enum value find ammo in the state and also in the AI agent scripts before I forget is just to register the uh, find ammo state Cool. So yeah, back to the find ammo state. Sweet. So the basically the only two things to change here is rather than checking if we're no longer low on health, uh, just check that we're no longer low on ammo. So in here, uh, I'm just going to create a new function called is low ammo. Um, 
on the weapon AI weapon script. So just opening up this, sorry, just navigate this way, create a new function on the AI weapon script called is low ammo. And here, um, yeah, it's pretty similar to this one really. Just change this a little bit. Uh, is low ammo, turn to bull. So yeah, here we just get the, uh, the current weapon. And if we have a weapon, then all we need to do is just uh, return if that particular weapon is low on ammo. If we don't have a weapon, then we can just return false. Sweet. So <clears throat> that should be enough for the is low ammo, uh, the find health, sorry, the find ammo state. Um, we just need to change this health tag to be the ammo tag. And the last thing to do is just in the attack target state, pretty similar to what we did for the update low health. We just want to do like update low ammo. And here, update low ammo. We just want to check if the weapons is low ammo, then change it into the find ammo state. Sweet. So if I test this out in the editor now, um, I'm just going to give the player like a maximum health of like a thousand just so the agent like doesn't kill me before it runs out of ammo. So hopefully after, I think it should have two clips and then it goes and finds ammo and then it goes and attacks me again. I just realized the, uh, the pickup doesn't disappear. Um, oh, and it's got more ammo, sweet. So yeah, need to just make the uh, pickup disappear when um, forgot to do that inside the ammo pickup we just want to destroy the game object here and also here like that cool so now testing this out one more time and then I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial it's not too exciting this one sorry about that but um it is kind of necessary to some future stuff sweet yeah so now the AI will actually go and try to find ammo when it runs out of ammo and little does it know that there is no more ammo in this level. So it is going to go on for an endless hunt for the rest of its life trying to find some ammo. Poor guy. I'll put him out of his misery, eh? Before I run out of ammo. Shadunkun. Sweet. <clears throat> okay, yep, that's um, that's it for this tutorial. I'm hoping the next one should be a little bit more interesting and the upcoming tutorials uh, I'm pretty keen to get into some more advanced topics for AI like um, different combat tactics and stuff like that um, but the next one is going to be on utility AI and this is uh, there's basically quite a few actions the agent can do now so um, yeah I'm really hoping to expand out the state machine and include some utility AI stuff Cool, yeah, so that's it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Kakite!